Welcome back, fellow YouTubers, to Disable DM. I'm Driven D and E, and you're watching the Fires of War episode five. Lost hope renewed. If me and I, I got Jeremy, E, Mary, E, Joe, O, Samuel, and Jill. So I'll give them a chance to introduce them. Um, so, plug the channels, all the groups, groups that they belong to, and introduce the characters. So, let's begin with Jill. Uh, hi, my name's Jill. Um, I don't have a channel to plug, but I am playing Vincent Jair, a level 5 human warlock, who is a uh, Pact of the Tome. And a Islander background. Awesome. Samuel? You're up. Um, tonight I will be playing Meluna. She is a wood elf, um, rogue, and she has the inheritor background. Um, which means that she actually was giving a journal detailing a, a shard location, but when she got there, turns up somebody's already taken it. So she's still on the hunt for that. Um, when she was younger, she was uh, beat up by the, the nobles, school, and around the village. Um, she dresses very pro provocatively and. Uh, she has a um, special disguise kit that allows her to look more human than she actually is. Awesome. Joe, you're up. Cool. Uh, I'm Joe. I will be playing uh, Akarat Heavy Hammer, a um, fighter wizard who... Uh, He's got a um, a nice little toy. The last uh, in the last session, he uh, actually used his um, ancestral weapon and discovered it's got a bit of a kick to it, and he's looking forward to using it again sometime soon. Maybe yeah. Hey, I'm Mary Chris, and my I am an artist, so my channels are in the description or comments. So. Yeah, check there, check him out, and I'm playing Guy Evelyn tonight, and she is the champion of Bahamut, and so she's a, um, a satyr, I hope I said that right, goodness, and she is uh, she's a druidist paladin, and so, and she has a, uh, an electric personality. Awesome. And last but not least, Jeremy. Hello, I, I'm Jeremy, I'm going to be playing a half-drow sorcerer, and I am going to leave it up to play to introduce more about the character, because I've actually decided some new things since last week that have nothing to do with the character sheet, but have fun in game. Um, I'm wacky, I'm funny, I use humor as a defense mechanism, I have depression and anxiety, and I'm fun! And we're going to play some D&D. Awesome. And I believe your character's name oh, is Lonnie. it is Lohalani. Lonnie for short. Awesome. So who would like to do a recap of the last episode oh, for some inspiration? I'll do it. There was a lich. We fight. Yeah. We suck. We, we venture run. into a... That's the whole yeah. summary. There was a lich! <laughs> I couldn't we venture into couldn't a... Breathe. Um, ...underground and fought some undead, and we came upon a cloaked shadowy figure, which somehow managed to hold us and give us all sort of nightmarish hallucinations. Uh, then managed to make the pyramid start collapsing and the floor open up into a chasm of lava. 
for real, not hallucinatory terrain or anything. And then we had to run away, though I was all for staying and fighting. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we made it out into an area that didn't really seem very familiar as far as the train goes. So wonder what I'm not sure what we'll face tonight, but hopefully it'll be uh, hopefully it'll be interesting. Hopefully we can trap down some more shard pieces. And oh yeah, Joe had uh, got let got let out somewhere special by his ancestor too. So that's how we kind of found our way to that place. So, something magic might be going on. Yes, and uh, when you guys left uh, the tunnel, oh, you entered into uh, a very big dank. Dark, moist swamp, and then the and up ahead you had seen what looked to be the uh, ruins of an airship, and that's where we ended last session. Wait, was it an airship or was it a like a regular seagoing ship? You believe it is an airship. Although it's kind of hard to tell because for for our characters and the ships are basically just stories and legends. Gaia, uh, give me a constitution check. Well, what does an eight get to me? You are Oh, cut off and miss the wrong rat, unfortunately. <coughs> and the swamp doesn't seem to be helping alleviate uh, at all. Okay, well, she, she's looking ahead and she's looking at this ruins. Are there any windows on this ruined aircraft? You Intact? You see what you believe would be portholes? Holes on a vessel that would sail the seas, and it looks like there are some doors and a grate a, that looks to be down into a cargo hole. Okay. Or um, like, are um, are like the doors and the windows like shattered or broken or totally run down or? Are we even? close enough to see all of that because when we ended last session we were just out of sight of the cave. You you <laughs> can like we just caught our breath. breath. We haven't even looked around. I mean ha! it's uh, you guys I, may have caught your breath. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, but the girl long <laughs> run. Yeah. You guys are close <laughs> enough to it that you can kind of make a out Plus, some of you know what would be typical for or a seagoing vessel. So you're kind of piecing together bits from what you can see and what is in people's backgrounds. My character would also be rather surprised that they were not taking stock of my character being a new person amongst the group. At this point, I just I want think, to breathe. <laughs> yeah, Vincent is more concerned about uh, about Gaia and uh, also concerned about what will happen if Gaia figures out what exactly Vin and Akarat were up to. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you guys haven't really had much time to stop. So, yeah, yourself. I'm gonna walk Gosh, darn over it, Gaia and the clerk's not here. Yeah, I'm gonna walk over to Gaia and offer her a drink of water from my flask and ask if she's feeling any better. But, uh, I think I think if there's a drink, I there was a moment that I felt maybe, maybe, but I told the uh, the seed not to fix me because its magic is needed for the for fixing the world. So I just suffer. But I, 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 should, I, I should be good. Maybe uh, Bomet, he, he will spare me at this, in, in, in this timing. 
Yeah, it was, must, uh, must have been a, all the daycare in there kept the kept the magic from working. No, no uh, perhaps, but uh, this night at this point she like um, reaches in and pulls out uh, from an inner pocket this golden seed, um, and it's just bright and just kind of I don't know. There's like this glow to it that kind of makes it look as though like there was a life form of sort. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh. yeah, gracious. Man, and ADHD, train of thought is gone. Yay! You were um, showing us the seed. Yes, uh, thank you. Seed. Golden, kind of swirly, as though like there's a life form or something inside. And she uh, she holds it out. It's like, this, uh, this thing uh, uh, a druid group gave me to make sure I put in the art of the world uh, whenever I finds it, and uh, it's a fixed world. I felt it, it's magic, it's very strong magic, uh, but uh, I felt it uh, try to heal me, and it's like, no, 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 don't do that. It, I've, I'd rather the world be better than myself. As she's rambling on, she's going to feel poking at the side of her forehead from Lonnie's mage <laughs> hand. <laughs> and yeah, just... come close and, and fairly close, she's going to feel, uh, from that hood, golden eyes piercing at her. A very curious expression. Um, By you the was, way, uh, someone in the... who the heck are you? Yes, well, I was going to be a little more polite, but... Uh, what kind of tiefling are you? Oh <laughs> no 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 no! I I'm not tiefling. I said I I say that, and I I jump in of a Bahamut. I don't think Bahamut was. You be have much. the strangest accent of any creature I have ever heard. Indeed, and so do you. And uh, who's to say that you're the, the one talking funny? Anyways, how I speak is not is not uh, of importance. Is how I was raised. And the poking would stop. <laughs> uh, I, I am Gaia. What is your name? <coughs> how did you happen upon us? And is your uh, out of character? And is your cocker jackal bite visible or obvious? No, uh, no all okay. the. All that y'all can, any of the people can see of um, Lonnie is the the um, a cloak pulled up forward, just enough that there's just some golden eyes beneath, and patch and uh, glimpses of very dark skin um, oh, with um, uh, gold tones like scales, perhaps on the okay. forearms and the cheeks. Okay. But anything else is it's only vaguely humanoid. Not of average height for a human, perhaps. Okay. I think there's also another feature um for the copper jackals, but I'm not sure if it's uh it do we have the sense of other copper jackals always on or is that an action that we have to take to like focus to be like can I sense any copper jackals within two miles? It is a pretty an action. Okay. Then uh, then no worries, Gaia is just what she said was what she said. I am Gaia. <laughs> what is your name? Lonnie. Um, Very um, short, specific, curt. Nice to meet you, Lonnie. Um, uh, how were you down in that? Uh, what were you doing in the temple? Finding my way. Your way where? Wherever I'm going. Oh, okay. well, where you're going? I don't know. Huh. Awesome. Well, I and hopefully the rest of you, as she points to the other party members, huh, are going to go sh check that uh, contraption out. It looks important. Um, the robe's going to part, and there's going to be. A metal shard. And you can see a feminine curve line as the arm holds it out. What others very interesting is on the wrist 
there is a silver shackle with um, blue stones in it and a link hanging off of it. And she's going to ask, what's this? DM, what is it? <laughs> what has he presented to us? His shard. Accurate. You want to explain? I'd love to if I did know. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, from the from the meta out of OOC standpoint. It is a metal shard that came out of the. Now I don't know if any of y'all else noticed it, but oh wait, I remember. It came I remember, out of I the remember, lick. I I, yeah, I'm like, oh, I know what that is now. Silly me. <laughs> And why does it want to stab? And he points at the person because he, uh, or sh uh, the cast of the spell on the the shard, um, resonated with the hilt. So whoever's got the hilt is who Lonnie points to. Why does it want to stab that person? And guy just kind of looks over at Acker. I just like, uh, wait, no, it was, Mar it was no. I think I might have the hilt because. Uh, Cho was gone that, uh, the first session when we first found pieces. Mm-hmm. And he had the hammer and had the hilt, but then yeah, I was... Yeah, it was Markham. A while. I don't know if I gave it back to him or not. You remember? Yeah, I, th I think you've got the, um, the sword. I've, I've got Zarok the, ha the hammer. Okay, okay yeah, so I've I got would just look over at Vincent. Hilt. Yeah, so you'd be pointing at me. Okay. It I couldn't remember myself if I had it or not. Okay. Well, when uh, Lonnie says this, uh, Akrat just pipes up and goes, Aye, it's probably because she smells so bad. <laughs> Do I have that? What did I take as my. Where's my. Oh no! Where did I take as my cantrips again? Uh, okay, ah. those Gaia sixteen. Gaia is very oh, observant, oh. mind you all. Okay, Danny, Victor, and Lonnie Tracy and passive. What? Danny, yours, and Jules, oh. AC. I'm not paying attention to the chat because there are voices. And yes, you can take that any way you want to. <laughs> uh, so Vincent's going to say, that thing wants to stab me? Huh? It and seems how so. do you know that? It's magic resonated. It pulled towards you. It's not necessarily going to stab me. I... I'm going to hold out my hand for it. Carefully. Mage hand it closer. I'm going to grab it out of the air. Does it do anything? I don't do that. And I hold my hand out, palm, and you can see the slashes from where I grabbed it before. I'm grabbing it carefully by the flat side. Okay. You managed to do so, oh, and you definitely feel oh, that it's tugging in towards the hilt of the sword. Yeah, okay, I'm going to take out the sword hilt and um, put it next to it, um, see what it does. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't really do anything. Hey. Is it obvious? Hey. That, is it obvious that the piece might match that particular hilt if um, it's forged, or does it just look like shard of metal and that's a hilt? I would say with with the vibrations and the tagging, and you guys would piece together that it's likely to be part of the serve on this hilt. And. It's uh, how many shards do we have now? Two or is it one? Just the one. One in the hilt. And the hilt. 
and there's eight shards total. Not counting the hill. All right. I'll put them away in my pouch. So as you guys are doing this, is is what it, uh, is Meluna doing in, in as she enters uh, the swamp, up coming from the opposite direction. She can see the vessel as well. And it looks like off in the distance there's a group of people standing around talking. She's going to approach stealthily um, and just quietly observe uh, initially and trying to discern if they're friend or foe. Um, she's currently um, just in case. She, she doesn't want anybody knowing that she's really there. Okay. <laughs> Make a stealth. All right. Uh, here we go. Pathfinders. It looks like twenty-eight. Nice. And uh, was that a nat twenty? Or? That was a nineteen. Nineteen. Okay. Hey. You, as you kind of duck behind I'm the vet as as all out of sight of the people who are standing around talking, you who has a very faint, faint scratching sounds that sound like they're coming from inside the vessel. I'm gonna try and uh, take a take a look inside, just a peek, see what I can see, since I am already pretty quiet and I, I, I can barely see my own hands right now. <laughs> okay, you managed to uh, sneak up on, on there, uh, uh, or peeking through some of the portholes. You don't see anything on the upper deck. All right. Looking through what looks to be some kind of great that you would think they lower cargo through, you see, <laughs> you, you see some large features uh, that are hunched over very ugly. They have six arms. Hmm. Very sharp things. And greenish skin. Hmm. Well, um, taking that these aren't necessarily friendlies, uh, she's just going. She's just going to casually uh, kind of step off the vessel and right. and make her footsteps uh, a little louder as she she gets closer towards the group and finally just altogether makes her presence known with a, a loud. Uh, <clears throat> If you don't mind, uh, I okay. do believe I've discovered Be something. Before you interact with the group, uh, give me some kind of arcana uh, or history check to see you know what the differences are. Okay. Uh, she got an 18 natural. Okay, you you have seen enough monsters as uh, creatures to think they are some kind of troll, but they seem to be mutated. Trolls normally don't have six arms, but they do seem to be trapped at that in the cargo hold of this. Uh, shit. But uh, so knowing this, I'll, I'll still approach the, the the group and say, uh, 
Yeah, it seems I've discovered something over here in this abandoned ship. Okay. It's kind of odd for a ship to be here. So, oh, as this woman steps up sour, basically the shadows and what little cover there is, is and starts to speak. Ake, how is the group reacting? And we will begin with Akarat. You're muted. That's a good way to start. Oh, as Akarat has just stood there with his hammer over his shoulders, he eventually catches a glimpse of this woman. He, he just kind of pipes up and he goes, Well, they're coming out of the woodwork. There's another one. And he sort of nods his head towards a direction to, to point her out to everyone else. Okay. So as Akarat is saying this, it's, what is Gaia doing? Breathing. <laughs> like she'll turn and look and just kind of her best um, impression thereof <laughs> cock her head a little bit and just kind of like indeed they are and who might you be okay. oh I'm um, sorry I've forgotten my manners I am Meluna Point, and she takes the bow from, uh, from off her back and does a little pose with it aims it at a tree uh, sorry. Aims it steady. The bow, I'm gonna have uh, my incarnum blade, blade crackle to life. Uh, just a little jumpy after what happened in the temple. Okay. So Vincent. I, yeah, I can like see guy like. Oh, oh, hey, what? oh okay. You, you, comes you, you out of nowhere. And Lonnie, seeing this woman step out, your companions have talked to her, and Vincent has summoned this. <laughs> And comments, or what are you doing? Uh, standing off to the side a bit. Um, I don't know the rest of the group well enough not to just assume that she was a part of the group too. Okay. Um, did they describe the the beasties upon the insides? Mm, not yet. Okay. And she's just, she's just kind of hanging out. Keep okay. it hidden off to the awesome. side, quiet. So, Mayluna, uh, what, what else are you going to talk to this, this group about? You know enough of Arcana to know this was definitely one of the legendary ships. Ips, and these monsters seem trapped within its hull. Uh, regardless, she's she's going to after she aims, does her pose. She's gonna take the arrow and put it back in the quiver, and unstring her bow swiftly. Um, take the string and roll it up around her wrist and and tie it on a loose knot. And then uh, she'll just say, she'll just describe uh, what she saw in detail, describing they the, they have uh, more arms than us. And that they are, they have green skin and um, the most vicious-looking noses I've ever seen. Can I, I roll a check to <laughs> yeah, I'm like, identify I rolled them. A 20. <laughs> oh. I don't know. And, uh, yeah, when you put your bow away, the Vincent will put his sword down and say, "Ah, uh, uh, greetings." Uh, you said your name was Meluna. What What are you doing here? And do you know where we are exactly? Well, you're in the swamp, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Just you are. Here. Ha, ha. You're very funny. Um, I rolled a twenty on intelligence just to see if uh, the if the description of the creature sounded familiar. Okay. A 
the description really doesn't sound familiar other than the savage look, the fangs, fangs and the green skin. Would it have been anything that Lonnie has fought before? It sounds, sounds almost like a troll. But the six arms are, are throwing you off. Okay, that's what I was figuring. I'm just kind of like, gotta and just quit. Lonnie probably would have no experience with these. With the lich, yes, but not these. Wow. Yeah. You well, you Unusual might adventuring have, careers might, for the win. I have experience with normal trolls, but probably not mutated head head versions of them. But you would be thinking uh, pretty much everyone would be thinking along the same lines given the description. That they kinda sound like trolls, but something's weird. Yeah, I would just quip out, eh, nothing uh, lightning and fire can't fix. <laughs> As Gaia says this, Acrobat, your head spins and, and you pass out. Oh, too much shit going on. I'm taking that <laughs> I need an old <laughs> priest and a young priest. This head spins what? <laughs> As you pass out, you you see what looks to be an angelic female standing in front of you. Oh, and it looks like she's bending over some kind of forge. And you can see a hammer or head made of blue jacket and topaz. And what looks to be a what will be the hell of a war hammer? And I'm assuming that's Zarok. Or he'd, he'd at least think so, anyway. You, you would uh, think, think, think so. Uh, Is this angelic figure noticed me, or can it perceive me? It can't and perceive you. Oh, as it looks up and smiles, says, I am Rasha. Uh, well, uh, it's good to see you, I guess, but where the hell am I? And he looks around him, confused as to how he managed to get from the swamp to this strange place. <laughs> she kind of chuckles, goes, this is just a vision. Uh, your body remains in the swamp. Because I see you bear eternal pain. Quite interesting since I'm in the process of forging it now. <clears throat> he, he sort of like looks over his shoulder and sees the hammer stuck over there. He goes, strange. You say, this is a vision, then why am I seeing this? Perhaps to, for you to understand more of the weapon you carry. Well, maybe you could enlighten me then. She a nods, odds. Uh, and you see a blue oh, oh, flame appear in, in her hands as she a, a forges the uh, two pieces together using incarnate magic. This weapon I made for a clan of girls to protect this realm. Um, from a great evil. I'm not sure what that evil is, only that is yet to come. Well, I could have told you that much, but the evil, there are many stories of what they are. No one's really sure what it is in particular. 
She nods. Of course, many stories happen. And, and, and your vision blows a little off, and you see a battlefield, and Russia is standing there with you. Oh, you see dragons fighting other dragons, and undead horses going up against dwarves, elves, and five feeding things approaching a hill. And upon this hill, hill, the, a a place the hand on a stone altar. Uh, and the bodies drop as as a golden knight appears carrying a flaming sword. And he he proceeds to uh, uh, lay devastation among this horde. <coughs> you you see deities walking among on this horde, horde and falling into the depths. But Ahmed's dragged down in a mighty battle against Tiamat. With neither side really gaining in an advantage. It, the last image you use OCE is this is Avatar are, are dropping and the world breaking as as its its surge shatters into eight shards. And a broken hill. Rasa gives you a moment to take this in. And it says, as, as, as this weapon was meant to be crafted before this war happened. Unfortunately, things happened faster than I expected. You see, this war hammer you get is sentient, and it will speak telepathically to you when the time is right. And at that, your vision blurs again, and you see a a a some um dwarfs that are your ancestors, as having the hammer safeguarding it. And once again, you see Russia. Only this time, she's not the beautiful or diva that you saw. It looks like she has been twisted and corrupted. As she is trying to slit a sum up of this clan of dirts. And then and your vision blurs and you come back to your body in the swamp. And the rest of you have been standing around just a couple minutes kind of talking. Well, <laughs> we'd be probably checking Akarat as soon as he fell down, at least. I imagine. Bangaya, she's like, like, eh, he's probably faking it. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't probably pretty concerned, um, especially with having heard that they're just monsters in the ship and having a party member just collapse. Um, <clears throat> as Akarat opens his eyes, he, he just goes, just opens him really quickly and goes, was there for long? A few minutes. What happened? Are you all right? Where, is it... Do you look hurt? I don't feel it, but... I he, won't get does, off. he does not appear hurt, although he does look a little worn out. Um, 
Meluna's already trying to help him to his feet. Come on, you gotta get up, lazy bones. You can't be laying about all day. <laughs> <laughs> he, he just he just looks over to your character. Would you say that your character is attractive? Um, <laughs> there's the picture for for that. So yes. Okay. <laughs> As you made this um, idle remark, which you probably thought nothing of, he, he just looks over to you and he goes, "Well, I could always make room." And time for laying around all day if you're interested. <laughs> and he sort of winks to you. And the dwarf is going to feel a bitch slap up the side of the back of the head with the mage hand. <laughs> hey, Wait, don't only go slapping can... the guy who just collapsed in the head. <coughs> oh, shoot. yeah. Uh, he's a dwarf, and mage hand can only lift 10 pounds. It's not a very hard hit. And Akarath, uh, didn't to you see you hear, hear a voice in your head say you pick me up, you pig? <laughs> You're not supposed to drop me in the swamp. And I need you to make a charisma save. A charisma saving throw. Ooh, 15. Uh, you feel compelled to pick up your hammer and to uh, 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 carry it with you. Yeah. Well, he, he would have picked it up and slung it over his shoulder, and he would have said that, like, oh, shut up, will you? <laughs> it doesn't make it's fun to you telling it to or shut up, but you very clearly weren't in control of yourself when you did that. As soon as you oh, picked it up, it seemed to release its hold on you. He's got it slick slung over his shoulder, and as he's um, he stands up to his full height and he's sort of cleaned his hammer, he just looks around to everyone and he goes, well, no need to worry about me. I, uh, Bit lightheaded is all, but uh, he looks around and he goes, but "If you're ready, lightheaded, eh? Lightheaded, eh?" You don't say. He he just looks at you and goes, "I don't get it." Anyway, <laughs> shall we? Let, all um, right. Good enough to fight. You won't collapse on us again. <laughs> no promises, but hey ho, live and we learn, eh? Yeah. If I uh, if I cast detect magic, does there any seem to be anything particular emanating from our recently fallen dwarf? If you detect magic, your brain's going to explode with the amount of magic on this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, between him and Vincent and the seed guy is carrying, I, I tell you what, a bad idea. I tell you what, yeah. if you're going to detect magic, give me a place on his body that you're sensing in a general area, more specific. It's not specifically a place he's looking. It's or she's. It's it's more an influence. It, it wouldn't. Yeah, be yeah. A, I, I get what you're doing. I'm just would, asking you to give me a location. It wouldn't be a location because, like, the weapon is obvious. His armor is obvious. He's. It's more looking for an influence, um, kind of like a hex or a, something like that, a part of his body body, not on his person as part of equipment. So if you are looking for some kind of curse, you would not sense a curse or a hex on it. But you definitely are overwhelmed by the power of magic that in this group. I, I, I'm, a, well, I'm also assuming that like Detect Magic won't really sense the Incarnums as much, the, because those become more like soul abilities as, as yeah. part of, inherent they, to their they person. They don't really get magic, magic. the soul melt, but they're definitely picking up the raw hammer, this Hilden shard, the, a golden seed. Okay. Does anyone have any visible uh, 
Jackal bites. Yeah, mine's around my neck. Looks like a um, bunch of shark tooth necklaces and copper sort of fused with the neck. Gaia's is around her right eye. There's a sun, uh, image of a sun theme, or sun red. Well, y'all would notice now that um, I'm turning off the the dark. I'm becoming active again, and uh, the thirteen that is um, tattooed on her left breast that is just barely exposed um, beneath the tops of her garment is starting to shine through a little ways, little ways, and she smiles and says, "Friends." Would not expect that out here. Nor us, I, th I suppose. Welcome. So, oh, as you guys are kind of getting your bearings, you put about these monsters inside this airship. What do you guys wish to do? Let's go explore and kill a conquer. I don't know. Maybe it's some. It's a ruin. It, there's something there, obviously. Yeah. Are they getting in common? <laughs> <laughs> yes. She from, wants to check out the, the creatures. Legends, you guys know that airships were said to fly through the air. And thinking back on the mystic carpenter uh, you remember Corbin and the dirt ghost was telling you that that uh, the turtle that the mystic carpenter sat on could sail through space and and could take you to the different shards of the world also, would Gaia remember the airships from her time um, and recall the kind of like the magical energies that were used to make very, it work? Very, very, very vaguely do you recall actually seeing That's okay. I can work vaguely. She just goes, <laughs> I can make it. If, if they ever get to the contemplating part of like, I wonder if we can run this thing. <laughs> Don't worry, guys. I got the lightning and... But anyways, we'll deal with that later. Mm. But she so, wants to go check it out. <sighs> so I will uh, make use of my skill set and follow behind anyone who's brave enough to go head headlong into this thing and deal with these creatures. So, wait, what did you see up there? Did you see... Could we get above them and just rain down death on them from above? Ooh. I don't know if they'll. I don't know if they'll actually stay right where they're at. Um, by Let's my guess, these things could. Hmm. It's worth a shot. Uh, what is the ship made of? Ship parts. The ship is actually made of wood. How okay? How has the wood survived this long? If it's an ancient something or other out in this decaying swamp? Don't know. Yes. Okay. <laughs> you guys, um, I don't even know for sure how long it's been there. How well, mentions to Maluna? He goes, "What's it? So whereabouts are they on the ship?" They all congregated, or are they all over? Looks like they're trapped in the the holds. Excellent. We can kill them from above. To which point, I would like to do a roll for um, Lonnie's combat awareness. Okay. Like tactically, what would be the best idea coming across this? <clears throat> As you're thinking, Akra is doing, and he. <laughs> He walks okay, over towards the ship. I only got a ship. 10. <laughs> yeah, I'm going with him. Maybe I'm not is, thinking um, you're going in alone. Maybe he, saw, he beckons over to Maluna, actually, and as he walks along the um, the side of the ship, he goes, so, where, whereabouts is it? Like, 
if it was on the other side. He, he's You'd like, have to climb up on top of it. As you guys are approaching the ship, and you notice the ship itself seems to be in very good condition. It doesn't actually look like it's been here very long. Maybe only a couple weeks. But these are. This is an ancient ship. The ship itself is. Uh, the description is is very very close or exactly like the stories. Exactly. Uh, um. The the red thing it you would find uh, is if it hasn't been in this swamp very long and it's been flying around. Now, uh, what happened to its crew? Uh, I'm going to uh, stealth for 17 and fly kind of across the deck and see what I can see above from a better vantage point than okay. stealthy mixed hey. stealth stealth. I'm climbing notice. up on deck and tossing a fireball on the hole. Okay. You notice the uh, swamp line and you don't really see anything out of what you would expect in the swamp. When when is there is there like evidence the shift uh, the ship came down like a meteorite and and there's like you know broken trees and a path that it barreled through and this is where it came to rest or is it just like there? No, it looks more like someone landed it in the specific spot. Okay. So. What about across the the deck on on top? I mean, he peered in through the um, slots and holes looking, to see the creatures. Looking down at the ship. If you do see down into the cargo holds and see these monsters, and there are what looks to be a corpses and bones down there. Okay. Can I do a history check to see if I if I know any of the stories of like? Battles that happened in the sky, like were there enemy ships that were, and this is like a, a boarding party, and the ship landed. Um, you would, all of you would know from the stories of the uh, airships, there were only a few airships ever made. Okay, so they were pretty uncommon. So how did Not, the monsters get trapped in there? Lottie would be thinking out loud, not posing. Oh. Obviously, not anywhere in, in earshot to hear the question either. Uh, what, did you say that out loud? You say, would I have been able to hear it? Maybe it would probably be on the very urge of it, right. edge of your. I mean, it depends on what your perception is. Probably crap. He's got a massive tin can on his head. <laughs> <laughs> what? You have to speak yeah. up. I've got a tin can in my head. So as Lonnie's trying to piece all this together, uh, yeah, I'm assuming as he's flying over before he's even really like gotten all the way in position. I think um, I was climbing up on deck and tossing the fireball into the hole. Yeah. Uh, give me an inside check before you throw it. Oh, a fireball. Insight, okay. Uh, that's going to be... I rolled a 19 plus... to 21. Okay. You do know oh, that the wood the ship is made of is extremely flammable. Okay. Um, so if you could is fire down there, you might very well burn a hole in the ship. Um, well, it's not going anywhere, is it? <laughs> is my detect no. magic? Is my detect magic still up from when I used it on our door friend? Yes. Okay. Does that does that give any clues to the ship? Like, is there like I'm a, 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 a magic log someplace? No. Oh. 
I mean, it, it itself is... doesn't seem to be magical. Is there anything else that, that picks up, stands out? Um, you get a faint sense of these monsters down below, oh, but you can't really place what it is about them. I mean, it's sitting in the water. I don't think it is. Now that now that I'm close enough, can I maybe Arcana check to see what they are? <sighs> to see, you can normally assume there's some kind of draw. Okay. I am not a walking bestiary, so I'm. <laughs> so Ak Akrat walking along the side of the ship and he's, he sort of keeps motioning to uh, Maluna he goes, right, is it, is it the other side of here? D just point it out to me <laughs> and he's feeling along the side of the ship well, to I'm going to start I'm going to tap, tap uh, the dwarf on the shoulder and say, just follow me and I'm, I'm going to climb up on, on the the deck with the. Uh, Did you? No, come on! I still want to throw the fireball. Oh, okay. I was just gonna ask. Did you? Did you did a check? Did you still want to throw the fireball after? If you're still throwing the fireball after, I'm gonna counterspell it and fall to the deck. <laughs> uh, it's third level. Does that just stop it? Yes. Yeah. I yeah, think so, yeah. Uh, I if think he so. counters spells there, but stop the fireball. I'm going to, when you do that, I'm going to glare furiously at you. What the heck was that for? So you guys see Vincent uh, uh, go to throw a lightning ink, ink or a fireball down into the uh, screen. And Lonnie, describe how you how your counter spell looks, and if you're saying anything. Uh, it's uh, is is her fireball um incarnum or a spell spell? All all magic is based on incarnum. Well, it's but it's not a soul melt. Was not so a from my jackal bite thing. Okay. And, um, Lonnie's golden eyes are gonna widen, seeing the spell she's very familiar with. She cast it on the lich. <laughs> Start up, mm -hmm. because it's a ship. It's wood. It's very clear that fire is very bad on ships. And yeah, I want to get. Probably, I want to destroy the thing. She's probably ten feet or so above the deck. And so she's going to shout the counterspell, and it's going to echo with the Encarnum. Um, which were, which are Encarnum is counterspell on? Oh, that stinks. It's not... I'm going to uh, do something Crap. here. I have to mark off a spell slot. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, the it's... It's going to fizzle. It's just going to be like the flames are going to start to build right there, and then they're just going to swirl and fade instead of being cast down into a ball. And he's, uh, she's going to glare right back. It's a ship! You're standing on it. Do you want to be in the middle of a bonfire? Yeah, that's the point. I'm a sailor. I know about ships. I know this thing will go up fast, and they'll be I... all dead, and we can sift through the remains for anything of value. Uh... I've done it before. Ending... In it. Hang on. Uh, I That's how you up. salvage ships. Hang on, everyone. Well, not salvage them, but every their cargo. <laughs> Did I? Uh, I have a question for the GM. Did I happen upon them when they were mentioning shards? No. Damn. You okay. Came up after that conversation. Well. 
it seems to me that this vessel could potentially work again if we wanted to invest ourselves in it a little little bit. And about this time, you hear some um, banging coming from below deck. Sounds like they're trying to reach up and rattle the grate. But they're not the things. able to get a good hold on it. Is he uh, awake now? So, As Akarat hears the um, the rattling on the inside, he tries to maneuver himself along the side of the ship so he can hear where it's coming through. It sounds like it's coming all throughout the lower deck. <clears throat> the top is the lower deck is one big cargo hold. Okay. Um, um, I don't recall from last session. Is the ship on its side or is it upright? It is upright. Okay. So, Akra's going to step up to the side of the ship and uh, he's just going to smile because he hears the noise <coughs> outside. And he's for some reason going to assume like the, the cargo bay is all the way along the bottom. He just sort of puts his hand on his hammer, it's over his shoulder, and he just goes, yes, yes, just, just do your job. And he, he holds it up and takes, takes a jolly good swing at the side of the ship and just goes, knock, knock. Okay. 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 Acrobat, give me a dexterity saving throw as you knock a hole in the side of the ship. And these, these trolls come pouring out. Um, a natural 20. You manage to dodge out of the way. A, 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 and kind of pull yourself up on deck. Act, and you see there are a dozen of these trolls coming out. But they are obviously hungry and very upset at being locked up. Well, Gaia, she's not going to wait any longer and whatnot and just kind of like, just starting to propose this idea of, like, well, what if we put Vata in the hold with them? So I cast light. Boom. Creature sound scurries. Oh, look. as they come. And she's just going to start pulling at the sky and creating dark clouds and muttering her words and whatnot and Call preparing to call lightning. Okay. Okay. <laughs> And will that go off on this surprise round? Or? Uh, no, she is working on it. Okay, so. so or, nice I guess I, uh, how big is the hole? The to give you an idea of the uh, size of these trolls, they are about seven feet tall and about three and a half feet wide. Uh, Hearing the. Lonnie's going to run to the edge. So he knocked a very big, big hole into oh, the boat. As, a, As Akra actually knocks the hole into the side of the boat, he just shouts up, Hey, Vinny, come down here. <laughs> All right, I'll jump over and... Uh... Lonnie's going to stand at the railing and cast Cloud of Daggers in the hole. And Guy's going to call after them as well, just like, <laughs> Don't get too close. Uh, okay. In terms of, so, I'm going to start pulling lightning down. So jump down. For, for the gonna, hang on, my eyes round. Like Go ahead and everyone give me initiative rolls, and then roll. Joe, what Go were you saying? I'm going to jump down next to Akarat, and I'm going to cast uh, fly at third level, and that means I think I can get him and me can both fly now. I think. Is that? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. 
if Akra is winning. Which... Can you use inspiration on initiative rolls? No. 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 Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was any d20 roll. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. Oh, then cool. That's much better. Whatever you want advantage on, basically. Yeah. Yeah, it's advantage. yeah you, can, you can have advantage on initiatives and disadvantage. So. Yeah. Uh, can, okay. So yeah, that'll be a total of 19. First time oh, I three. I actually rolled um two 20s in a row. That check and an initiative. So that dice is going to roll over the rest of the night. Okay, so what is Acrobat and Vincent's Dex mobs? Um, negative one. Plus two. <laughs> okay. So it will go. Acrobat. No. And what is Lonnie's dex mod? Uh, plus three? Yes. Okay. So, it would go Lonnie. And Gaia. Okay, so, Vincent, you are up first, so you jump over the side. Yeah. I see, like, I hear Akarak call to <coughs> Vincent to jump down, and he jumps down, and he casts Fly on both of them. Um, and if I've got any movement left, I'm going to jet back up in the air and out of these shoulders. Okay. Yeah, you could make it down, cast it, and then use the rest of your movement to fly back up. Yeah, and I'll say, Nah! Akarak, come on up here. <laughs> um, as he says this, he, he sort of he feels the magic sort of like swelling around him. He, he sort of smiles to you, and you, you see his copper teeth glinting. And he, he just um, erupts from the ground and comes up with you. And uh, as he does this, he gets a really funny feeling from his hammer. And he just gets a sense, and he just grips it with both hands and he holds it back over his head and just throws it down at the nearest at the nearest troll. Okay, go ahead and give me an attack roll. Wow. That is a natural eighteen with my mom and plus many. So twenty six. Okay. That is definitely a hit. So go ahead and give me some damage. Uh, that's 14 blood draining damage. Uh, and 12 points of lightning damage. Okay, describe what this looks like as you strike one of these thralls. Well, as Akra holds his hammer, over his shoulder, and, and Guy is sort of collecting the clouds above him. He just looses, looses it from him, and he just impacts him instantly. If you were paying close attention, you could almost swear that a lightning bolt just erupted from Guy's thundercloud and just struck this creature as it smote him. And Absolutely. looking at the creature, its, it's centre of its chest is just burning slightly. And you get a, a nasty smell of sulfur in the air. Awesome. Okay, uh, let's take a couple minute break and when we get back, uh, uh, Luna, you're up.
Liar, liar. Tor Morgan Freeman is God. Uh, no, uh, Bruce Almighty. All I can think of is the <laughs> female version of the Lost Boys all of a sudden here. Oh, no, well, okay, that, but... Well, smite me, almighty oh, smiter! Smite yeah. Y'all are all Dude. flying and shit, and uh, I'm just well. stuck here on the ground. <laughs> oh, do you have wing envy? <laughs> Maybe. All right, little anal dwelling butt monkey, it's time to go home. I take personal offense to that. How dare you tell me to go home? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Coming from the dwarf, of course. Oh, I just... It's one of those things where, you, where they's like, You... You lousy scoundrel! Hey, I'm not lousy! Okay, I'm back. Welcome back. Thank you. That did you. It's no bad smell. So, is everyone back, or...? I don't uh, think anybody left. I'm here. Okay, awesome. So, Meluna, uh, yep. give me a perception check before you take your turn. Okay. Twenty one modified. Given everything that's going on, you barely make it out, but you hear what sounds like thunder or rumbling in the distance. Good, that means your lightning bolts will be more powerful, Mayor. Possibly. You're most welcome. It is what guy mm. does. The DM I uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna just as a free action use uh well use my mental link that I've established with Vince to to tell Vince uh, I hear rumbling and I just barely escaped whatever the hell was behind me. Um, so. Where am I? Where am I in relation to every, everything else now? Since all that occurred, you are are there on the deck of the ship. I'm standing up on the deck. Yeah. Okay. So uh, no, I'm just but Vincent and the acrobat is still on top of the ship. Uh, hopefully they haven't seen me yet. Um, up here. Since they burst out th from below, I'm going to try and uh, attack one of them uh, down below. The one that uh, looks like uh, it might have been hit. Okay. Is there anybody within five feet of that particular one? Um, they... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say there would be at least one other troll. Oh, damn. Okay. Then that don't help. Okay, so I'm going to take my shot. Uh, <coughs> it's a 19 to hit it. That definitely hits. For minimum damage. It's not a good hit. Um, so it goes through the uh, through the um, troll's ear. 
Okay. Ah, and, fuck. And what's the damage? Four damage. Okay. And are and you going to move? I'm going to move towards the um, towards the. I'd imagine like there's there's captain quarters on one end. I'd kind of like duck down over the railing of the ship and and uh, use my cunning action to hide. Okay. So I'd move I'd move further up the ship towards the front of the the vessel. Awesome. And doing that. Lonnie, what are you doing? Uh, I'm going to cast cloud of daggers. In the hole. Okay. Is it bigger than five feet? Is that what it is? It's about. It's about. Yeah, it's five feet. It's eight, a cube. Five feet. Okay. Yeah, the hole's about eight feet tall and maybe four feet across. Are the trolls happening to get out one at a time, or are they being able to get two at a time? They they came out one at a time. Well then, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and cast a uh, cloud of daggers right there. Okay, so pretty much right at the entrance of the hole. Right, they have to. Um, and it is four six. Uh, eight nine points of damage. If they start in it or walk through it. Okay. Well, two of them are definitely in it, but they're not moving yet. And I will go ahead and spend a sorcerer point and cast <coughs> Firebolt. Okay. Are you aiming at the one that has been hit or at a different draw? If there's only if if there's like two of them out, then the one that hasn't been hit with like the hammer and stuff. All twelve of them are outside of the ship. Is that how many were inside the hole to begin with? Yeah. So if they're already outside the hole, I don't want to cast cloud of daggers. I thought I thought they were trying to wiggle out one at a time because no. that's how much no, room they the wall. they made the outside of the hole. Oh, okay. Well, then, instead of that, I'm going to use my Incarnum for Quicken Spell, and I'm going to cast two Fire Bolts and hit two of the ones that haven't been damaged. Uh, okay. My first one was uh, 23. That will hit. And it will do 12 damage. Okay. The second, okay. one, the second one was 18. That it's also. And it'll only do 5 damage. Okay. And then I'm going to so, duck, duck down at the railing so I have cover if they throw things at us. Okay. Uh, give me a perception check as, as you are looking off in the distance and ducking down. Uh, 15. Uh, 16. You can barely make out, out some um, shapes. It appears to be maybe a half a dozen to a dozen men on her back. Or at least that's what you think they are. But they seem to be rather large. Almost as if if a guy the size of a gorilla was sitting on top up of a Clyde still. Sure. So the rock riding the Budweiser horses? Pretty much. <laughs> We're screwed. <laughs> and with that, the, tro the trolls will 
start to try to climb up the side of the ship. Unfortunately, they won't be able to make it up and attack. So, Gaia, what are you doing? I'm going to try and squeegee these guys off by calling down lightning. Boom! Um, hey, yeah. Do it. So, yep, she's going to go for the space right there. Um, uh, I'll roll the damage, but they have to make a deck save of 13. Um... As a reaction to lightning coming down, I'm going to Misty step away. Okay. They do not make it. Awesome possum. They can take 15 points of lightning damage. Nice. Yep. And um, Gaia will draw out her rapier and just kind of walk over to the edge and just carefully look down. And then she'll check her surroundings. Does she see any portholes? Behind her. Before you can even look back ack, ack over your shoulder, you, you see a coming down in front of you and striking the trolls of just a barrage out of arrows and javelins. As these trolls are, are, are falling left and right. And you so <laughs> I want to observe her surroundings. <laughs> you guys hear these thundering hoofs hoofs at a voice speaks who who intrudes on the land and, and of the con. And that's where we'll end the session. Oh, come on! I want Guy to be like, it is us! <laughs> we are I here to fight to the trolls! Save, we are here to save your lands of these monstrosities! Uh, well, we'll see next session if the trolls are totally dead or not. Well, I like how Gaia had no regard for her friend standing underneath this giant bolt of lightning <coughs> right she there at the friend. railing. Oh, she gets a little tunnel vision when it comes to a fight. It's a little, and that's why she did make mention, like, don't get too close. Like, that, that, that was a very poor way of her saying, don't get too close to the troll things, because she tried to warn you. Like, I'm going to just go zoop, yeah. zap, Yes, that's a joke. Oh, acrobat, they are considered large. And as for, like, the speed casting, um, sorcerers have, um, their level th three, um, <laughs> class ability is called metamagic, and they can choose of, like, five, five or six options, and one of them is quick and spell, and it yeah. reduces the cast time of a spell. So it goes from an action to a bonus action. So he cast Firebolt, or she cast a Firebolt with her action, and then Quicken spelled a Firebolt for, as a bonus action attack. Um, you can only I cast two spells if they're both cantrips, though, right? Right. I don't have very long. Um, I have to get going to take care of my uncle Doc. Uncle's dog have dinner stuff like that. Okay. So really quick, let's go over people's highlights. Alright, next session you'll see what happens and um the javelins and spears and arrows and I liked Vincent's determination to cast a bloody fireball. And I also really enjoyed uh, Lonnie's like reaction to it. <laughs> this is zoink. <laughs> so that was that was entertaining. Uh, and I'll be done. Okay. How about you, Joe? Um I just feel bad for um did you say Drill or Joe, sorry? I said Joe. Okay. I just feel bad for this poor new woman who's just looking through this, this swamp, trying to, I don't know, find whatever things are in here. She comes across this rowdy rabble of this <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she's kind of confused. Like, uh, she, she's seeing a lot of decision and, and lack of, of order. <laughs> yeah. 
kind of thrown like, off by it all. Definitely a chaotic group. I just thought it was amusing how um, she sees three other people flying and she's, she's kind of like, ah, that's disappointing. I wish I could do that. Just imagine the disappointment on her face. How about how, how you, Jill? Where did you like? Um, I liked it when Ember's character showed up. I thought that was pretty cool. And I liked... Uh, I liked it when Akarat just knocked a hole in the hold and got the Yeah, I think, I think that was my favorite scene. Hey, let's just hey, get tired of the debate with the hammer and boom. Yep. Open what's up our, the floodgates. What's our Dwarven's friend's name again? Akarat. Akarat. And how about how you, oh, Samuel? Uh, definitely just seeing everybody flying around. That that was pretty awe striking for for a that's character that's grounded. Yeah. You know, I like to act yeah. right spontaneous drunkenness. Just uh, and, and we will pick up that session if you got eyes answering the con and finding out what's happening with the trolls. Next time we'll be So Next two Tuesday? Two no, weeks two, weeks. Weeks. two weeks. Okay. So I hope our viewers enjoyed the session. I know it's a little bit shorter than we normally do. Oh. Tense. Oh. But it was a blast. I love running <laughs> in this campaign, and our players are just fantastic. So. Until next time, make the dice always roll in your favor. <laughs>